I know what you're thinking. You've heard this story a thousand times. But have you? Have you seen this story? I guess it all started my junior year in college. There were things going on in that time. Basically that whole year, I felt pretty much out of control. And the one thing I could control was my body. It was mine. So I controlled it. I wouldn't say I was anorexic. There was no specific food that I really longed for. Well, you couldn't say I was bulimic because, you know, I couldn't make myself throw up. I tried it once. It didn't work. <laughs> I guess I would say I was hyperfunctional. I was taking five classes. I was president of my a cappella group. I was doing independent laboratory research of my own. I was a production assistant on a PBS documentary. I was an illustrator for all these journals and magazines on campus. I was making films in class. And then I decided I would run a marathon. I think the marathon covered it up for a lot of people. Anything that they saw change in my body, they figured it was just from a rigorous training regimen. So basically, my days would consist of getting up, running five miles, or eight on weekends, before my cup of coffee and my bowl of cereal. Then pretty much I would just drink water and Diet Coke all day. Because of my schedule, nobody would really notice if I didn't come back to the dorm for lunch. They just figured I was off doing one of my 5,000 things. I'd actually eat dinner with people to cover my tracks. Dinner consisted of a big salad and a piece of bread. And then I would go to work out at the gym, weight training for an hour or two. So all told, I would take in about 700 calories a day. And my big goal was not to eat more than 10 grams of fat. It was actually kind of strange because instead of intervening or asking questions, my friends sort of viewed me as a role model. For example, this woman that I worked in the lab with, Pat, she was this great woman, severely obese. And she watched me training and after my marathon, which I did run, didn't win, that's for sure. After my marathon, she told me that she was inspired and that she was going to train to run a 5K, which she did. She did it the right way. She got a trainer, lost about 75 pounds, and walked, or ran walk to 5K. I mean, I could tell you other stories like that, but I guess what I'm saying is that everyone was deriving these really great benefits from what was going on, except for me. Certain things I didn't tell people, like my hair was starting to fall out. I kind of spent every minute of my life feeling like I was having an out-of-body experience. I'd become this mind and this voice, and my body had become this sort of abstraction, this other thing that my mind could just play around with. The marathon, the running, is an interesting metaphor now that I think about it. Because in a way, I was running from everything. I dated a guy for a while that year. He kind of knew about my regimen. I don't know if he thought it was a problem, really. He always told me I was too skinny. My brain was not in this relationship, but... Um, one night I came over for him to cook me dinner and he cooked me the most enormous calzone which must have had like half a pound of cheese in it 
It was just like this huge molten, just wad of cheese with like a hint of a crust outside of it. And I stared at this like bubbling thing in front of me, which was basically probably six months worth of fat on my scale. And that was the moment I knew that I needed to break up with him. I felt so far away from him at that point, and it was just like this calzone told me to get out. So I got out. Um, so I kept on doing this for about five years. And now, six years later, I feel like, I feel like my brain is back in my body again. That I live in my body again. I eat cheese. <laughs> and, you know, I still work out, but, you know, I work out for me, which is a big difference. Um, I'm in a good relationship. I'm in, I'm in love. Requited love for the first time in my life. You know, but even in this relationship, early on, I remember one, one day, actually one evening, Alex and I were sitting on the couch and he squeezed my side and said, ooh, love handles. <laughs> and, um, wow, that threw me back in that minute. That threw me back six years. <laughs> but, you know, I take it every day. And... I think the scariest thing in all of this is that I couldn't tell anybody. I mean, who's going to understand? These are things that girls do. That the teenage girls do. These aren't things that 19, 21, 25 year old guys do. I don't know, I've never met another guy who I've talked to about this. seen this story a thousand times. But have you? Have you seen this story? <laughs> 